Celebrating 25 years of commitment to Guam, Micronesia, and the CNMI. Cars Plus Hyundai, home of the Kona Electric Vehicle, an electric heart with an SUV soul. Test drive yours today at Cars Plus. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Ahead on primetime, the Watch Over Our Kids program is a recovery initiative announced today by the governor. Nestor Lakanto has the story. And in the CNMI, Tomas Manglutnia has the details on how the House may request an extension to meet the Senate impeachment record deadline. And the University of Guam's annual conference on island sustainability kicked off today. Daniel Perez has all the details. These stories and more right here, right now on primetime. Hoffaday and good evening everyone, I'm Hannah Devonzo and thanks for tuning in to your news leader. Calling it a major recovery initiative that will provide a fundamental boost to the economy, the governor announced today the expansion of the Programmin Penilan e Famagun or Watch Over Our Kids program. Effective today, thousands of working middle class families are now eligible for expanded child care assistance that can cover up to 100% of monthly child care costs. Income limits have been raised to make more families eligible for the six different programs that will be rolled out. Applications are now available for the Child Block Grants and Employer Child Care Program. But longtime Public Health Program Administrator and current Deputy Director Terry Uggen says he's especially excited about the Relative Care Program. For the first time, we actually can be working more and more with the grandmothers and grandfathers that are out there that for years had taken care of their, their, their nieces, their nephews, their grandkids. Relatives caring for children will require minimal training and inspections on the suitability of their homes. A total of $81.5 million in one-time and continuous funding has been allocated for the programs, which will help up to 5,000 families with children under the age of 13. Still, that's just a fraction of the estimated 43,000 kids in that bracket. The governor says child care is critical to sustaining the economy and says she would support universal free child care if funding was available. Child care is one of the biggest expenses. Um, some people work and they, and they, they expense almost 50 to 60 percent of their income just in child care. And if we can... Um, work together with the with the private entities also to see what we can do to make that less expensive um then then of course we will work towards that for koam news i'm nestor lacanto on koam's midday show hotspot governor lou leon guerrero maintained her opposition to resolution 291. the resolution main sponsor is minority leader senator chris duenas during session Monday, it was added to the agenda. The resolution calls for the termination of the public health emergency. The governor in a recent executive order blasted the sponsors of the resolution, saying it would compromise federal funding for programs such as SNAP. Senator Duaneus, in an interview with KUAM, said she could do what Hawaii's Governor David Ige did and issue a standalone order ensuring that SNAP benefits continue after the emergency has ended. That it would be irresponsible. That's Why something? do we have to do that? That, I think, uh, is not a solution. Why do we have to do that? I am saying to the people of Guam that this lifting of public health emergency now, today, tomorrow, is premature. It's totally dangerous. And the reason that I want to continue this public health emergency is that, is just that. We will stand to lose millions of dollars in SNAP. Why do I have to do a separate emergency for SNAP when I can continue the public health emergency that we are in right now? So I think um, his way of dealing with it is uh, totally, uh, I think, um, not the ad adequate way, not the most logical way, and again, totally irresponsible. Session debate on Resolution 291 is scheduled for April 14th. And Congress is proposing some relief from rising gas prices. Congressman Michael San Nicolas announced he signed on to a bill called the Stop Gas Price Gouging Tax and Rebate Act, 
The measure introduced by House Transportation Chairman Peter DeFazio creates a tax on excessive corporate profits from oil companies and returns to money, money to consumers in the form of a tax rebate. San Nicolas said the bill's language ensures that the gas tax rebate would apply in the territories and that the local tax authorities can administer it if it becomes law. He says it will be returned to consumers as a monthly advanced and refundable tax credit and the eligibility criteria is the same as for stimulus payments under the American Rescue Plan. According to the news release, the oil giants enjoyed a record $237 billion in profit in 2021. Meanwhile, on Thursday, a public hearing will be held on two bills introduced by Speaker Therese Terlahi that aims to bring direct relief to residents at the pump. Bill 260 proposes repealing public law that increased the liquid fuels tax rate by four cents a gallon in 2017. The second measure, Bill 261, proposes repealing and eliminating the liquid fuels tax altogether, which is currently estimated at 15 cents for each gallon. According to the speaker, our residents are experiencing a dramatic increase to their cost of living on Guam due to uncertainty around the world and a slowly recovering economy. I believe that with proper use of 62 million excess revenues, road repairs, exceeding the current 10.5 million annually collected from the liquid fuels tax can still be prioritized while bringing relief to struggling families and small businesses on Guam. She adds these efforts are important in ensuring that our families who are struggling to pay rent and utilities are given sustainable financial support. The hearing is scheduled for Thursday in person at the Guam Congress building at 1.30 p.m. And over in the CNMI, the House is on a tight deadline that could determine the fate of whether or not a House prosecutor and if impeachment records even exist in the Senate trial of Governor Ralph Torres. Regional correspondent Tomas Mangluttner reports on the latest moves on the Hill. Time is running out, and as of news time, the House has less than 24 hours to correct the impeachment record and resubmit it to the Senate. We are looking into um, maybe seeing if, if there's an extension, uh, if we can ask for an extension. If that extension isn't granted and they do not resubmit, the Senate's rules say there will be no impeachment record or a House prosecutor. Our clerk also, you know, she felt at least like doing all the work and all that. She felt that she did follow the rules down to the T, uh, but maybe they want to be a little more particular, a little bit more specific. So what needs to be changed? The Senate's rules outline a painstaking process that the House must comply with, including numbering the pages and providing a table of contents. In a 35-page document, the Senate clerk identifies seven of what the Senate describes as deficiencies. The House must also correct its table of contents, organize documents in chronological order, and explain how standalone documents are related to the charges. Villa Gomez says they aren't shaken and maintain their request for a team of five prosecutors from the House instead of one person, but the Senate of, uh, has shot down that suggestion uh, multiple times. So far, I just uh, the information regarding them proceeding with or without a prosecutor for me is... Um, uh, you know, I just got that information by reading the news, but I have not seen a, I have not seen an official communication saying that, uh, well, you know, we're going to stick to our rules and we're going to proceed. While it is not official, it is likely. KUAM has reached out to the Senate President Jude Hofschneider for comment on whether or not he'd grant the House an extension to correct the record. Tomas Manglotnia for KUAM News on Saipan. A hearing was held today in Superior Court for Kepco and Samsung EC American Inc. The Attorney General's office filed a lawsuit against the construction company when they failed to implement their approved sediment and erosion control plant at a solar farm project. This led to the island's historic freshwater site, Marbo Cave, becoming a mud pit. Trial is scheduled for November 30th. The Guam Environmental Protection Agency also issued a NOV to the company, which they filed an appeal to. A hearing has yet to be held because there's still no administrative officer to oversee it. And a superseding indictment was handed down against Nicholas Wayne Moore, and now a second person for a drive-by shooting that occurred in Agania Heights almost two years ago. 
Now also charged in the case is 27-year-old Eric Benjamin Stallone. He was indicted for aggravated assault, terrorizing, and possession of a firearm without a firearm ID. The drive-by shooting occurred on October 15th of 2020. Moore and Stallone were allegedly in a black pickup truck. The victim was only identified as BM, but he told law enforcement he believed the target was supposed to be another individual identified as CAG because he owed more money. Moore faces murder charges in a separate case involving Michael Castro, who was reported missing around the same time as the drive-by shooting. And sketchy activity at the Dededo Skate Park has put the heat on, on officials to do a 180. Tyler Matanani has the details on what leaders are doing to ensure a safer skate experience. Dededo Vice Mayor Peter John Beneventi says he was shocked when he heard the news of the riot at the Dededo Skate Park that sent two people to the hospital and a victim to lose an eye. I just drove by that this area like literally 30 minutes before the incident had happened and uh, you know, I was struck because there wasn't much people at that time. With a population of over 44,000, the village of Dededo has proven to push law enforcement to their limits. With GPD, you know, they'll be lucky if they have seven guys on shift at the Dededo precinct. You know, lately they've been really short. And, you know, I think, you know, to cover grounds between Jigo, Dededo, and the borders of, uh, you know, Tumuning and Tuman, Harmon, Barragada, Manila. You know, that's a lot of ground for the guys from GPD to cover. Department of Parks and Recs Director Roki Alcantara says patrolling the Dededo Parks is a collaborative effort between DPR, the mayor's office, and GPD. According to DPR, the skate park used to be enclosed and would shut down by 10 p.m. But as you can see behind me, someone has since cut the gate. They even cut the locks on the switch box. That thankfully has been replaced. But Alcantara says that they're taking even more remedial action to ensure a safer skate experience. We probably have to put some signs here that, you know, no alcoholic uh, consumption here. Another thing that we're going to be doing on all the parks is putting the surveillance cameras so that's already in the works as far as coming back and fixing the fence I mean we can do that and lock it up again at you know like around 10 o'clock so that's 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 another uh, avenue that we can go to. Alcantara also suggested having personnel from the sports complex make sure the park is closed around 10 o'clock. He says a lack of park rangers has severely hindered the agency from ensuring park rules are followed. It's the lowest it's been. Uh, there used to be more than 10 of them, but they just keep uh, moving to another agency. He says DPR is currently waiting on two to eight park rangers to join the force. In the meantime, Vice Mayor Beneventi advises everyone to be aware of their surroundings and to call the proper authorities. And, you know, hopefully they come in time. For KUAM News, I'm Tyler Matanani. And get ready, everyone. We could see some heavy rains this weekend. The National Weather Service is keeping a close eye on a disturbance located south of Chuuk. Although it's expected to head towards Yap, there's still uncertainty on its movement. The NWS is projecting, though, it could pass south of Guam over the weekend. And if it does, it could bring flooding in poor drainage areas. Flash flooding could also be possible during the heaviest rainfall. For now, a red flag warning is in effect for Guam until Friday at 7 p.m. A high risk of rip currents is also in effect for the entire Marianas throughout Friday night. And still to come on your news leader, the University of Guam's conference on island sustainability kicks off today. And later, the winners from DYA's annual oratorical contest. These stories and more coming up next. Beautiful. It is, right, baby? Dad, isn't that where we usually stop for gas? It's where we used to stop, but not anymore. But isn't that the place with the milkshakes? Okay, all right, all right, let's go. Get it out, kids. <laughs> Take your adventure further in the first ever Santa Fe Hybrid. The new season just dropped. Enter the big dinner box from Pizza Hut. Two pizzas, breadsticks, and wings all in one box. You'll run out of episodes before you run out of food. The Big Dinner Box, only from Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. Here at Nimitz Towers, we're a large-scale rental complex. We have over 20 employees. And when the pandemic hit, our concerns were people not being able to work, 
loss of revenue and income. And luckily, due to PPP, we were able to keep all our employees employed, working. We were able to provide services, maintenance, and cleanliness for the building and the operation. Also, the rental assistance program helped us stay solvent during the pandemic and helped us keep the attendance in place. We're thankful for Congressman San Nicholas advocating for these funds on our behalf in Washington, D.C. If you have any concerns about any federal issues, feel free to contact your congressman's office. Thank you for the federal funds. 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 Paid for with official funds from the office of Congressman Michael F.Q. San Nicolas. Let us know what's up on our KOM News WhatsApp tip line at 671-727-0094. Share information about what's happening in your town on Guam or the CNMI and what you want us to know. Reach us on WhatsApp at 671-727-0094. The 13th Annual Conference on Island Sustainability kick off, kicked off today with a press conference at the Hyatt in Tumon. Daniel Paris has the details on what the week-long event has in store. It's been two years since the Conference on Island Sustainability held its last in-person forum. This year, UOG decided to have the international conference in a hybrid format, both in-person and via live stream. This year's theme, harness wind in our sails to a sustainable 2030. Director of the Center for Island Sustainability, Dr. Austin Shelton spoke on the importance of island sustainability for Guam. Sustainability is something that brings us all together because it's about our future. It's about what we're going to have here on our islands for our future generations. Dr. Monica Filio Mujer with Ciencia Puerto Rico is one of the speakers at this year's CIS event, where she'll be talking about the importance of culturally relevant science communication. What that means is connecting science to the culture and the identities of people. Um, people, you know, we look at things through a cultural lens, through our identities, our experiences, our backgrounds. So it's really important that we, um, we connect science with those things. When it comes to island sustainability, we have to talk about um, not just what we have to do, but we have to take action. And in order to take action, people need to feel ownership about what sustainability means for them, for, for their realities. And communication plays a really important role for that. You can catch Dr. Mohair on Wednesday, April 6th, for the STEM Symposium from 8.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Grand Ballroom in Hyatt, where she'll share more on culturally relevant science communication. The conference will formally open on April 6th at 4 p.m. Other activities happening are pre-conference sessions on April 5th and 6th that include a NASA Guam Research Symposium, a Guam Housing Symposium, a Climate Adaptation Symposium featuring student research, and site visits to the newly opened G3 Makerspace, the G3 Community Garden, and the Guam Museum. Those interested can register and view the conference schedule and speaker bios at uog.edu slash CIS 2022. Daniel Perez reporting for KUAM News. Incumbent Senator Sabina Flores Perez has picked up a senatorial packet according for the Guam Election Commission's website. Perez is seeking her third term as a senator. She chairs the legislative committees on labor, environment, procurement, statistics, revenue and taxation. Angela Therese A.M. Santos also picked up a senatorial packet declaring herself as a Democrat. Peter Santos picked up a packet for the nonpartisan attorney general race. Santos chairs the responsible Guam Political Action Committee. Over in the NMI, Governor Ralph Torres submitted his budget proposal to the legislature in line with the constitutionally mandated April deadline. His budget propose, proposal outlines $101 million in available appropriations in the general fund. He wrote to Senate President Jude Hofschneider and House Speaker Edmund Villagomez saying he recognizes the challenges that several major natural disasters, the COVID-19 pandemic and labor issues have had on the CNMI's economy and progress in revitalizing our infrastructure. He addressed the budget in a recent interview with Tomas Manglutnia. Every year we also do an amendment towards June or July where we have a better understanding on the collection. Um, and so we're forthcoming with some changes, an amendment to the budget. But overall, um, we got to protect uh, NMC. Of course, uh, with PSS, it's a mandate that they get 25%. Uh, but to continue to support NMC, of course, uh, our DPS, our law enforcement agencies. Um, and uh, what I ask the legislature is to look at uh, new revenues. 
He says they will continue to examine the impact of American Rescue Plan Act funds, given that some funds have been appropriated but not expended. He says they expect a detailed report on what's left of the nearly 500 million federal dollars in the next month. The funds were used to cover 20 percent of the wages of those returning from being furloughed and to ease the cost of utilities. He says his major priorities are infrastructure development, destination enhancement, diversifying the economy, disaster recovery, COVID-19 response, and improving core government services. It's been an issue piling up for years. Illegal dumping of many types of waste from beds, sofas, washing machines, and even damaged car parts, just to name a few. As piles of trash continue to grow, some island residents are reporting that some mayor's offices have not cleaned up white goods due to discrepancies with the vendor. However, PD Mayor Jesse Alley, who is also the MCOG president, clarified that the issue only temporary and lasted for about a day or two. Alley is pushing residents to do their part with the rising pro problem of unauthorized dumping and to contact their village leaders or alternative agencies. So please call your mayor's office and see, you know, if, if they can help you out. Because if we can't help you, then you can dump it at GSWA or GSWA can pick it up. And so I'm talking about sofas and beds, mattresses. Those are not considered recyclables. But if you're a GSWA customer, you certainly can call them and they can pick that up for you. Um, if you have paint, if you have fire extinguishers, those types of things, used oil, cooking oil, we don't pick them up as recyclables, but you can dump them for free. You don't even have to be a JSWA customer. You can dump them for free at, in Harmon. For a complete directory of mayor's offices island-wide, visit mcog.guam.gov. And the Guam Department of Youth Affairs held its annual oratorical contest last night at the Guam Congress Building in Hagatnya. This year's Youth Month theme is Strength and Unity. Father Duaneus Memorial School student Kieran Toe won the contest for high schoolers, and the middle school winner was Santa Barbara Catholic School student Gabby Tesoro. Um, so I discussed um, Strength and Unity as this year's theme, um, specifically how national issues um, end up in Guam and how we can solve them on a local level as well as on a national level. Um, and how we're creating our future for um, not just my generation, but um, generations after me. I felt that it was very important for me to kind of speak for the teens, for the youth today, because, you know, it's very hard to speak in this new normal we have. Will participate in a virtual proclamation signing to declare the month of April as Youth Month along with the Governor and Lieutenant Governor. Toe will become the Youth Governor and Tesoro will become the Youth Lieutenant Governor on Island Leadership Day, scheduled for April 7th. Stay tuned up next, Dave Delgado, with your roundup of local sports and still to come this week's Giving Every Tuesday feature. Keep it here, you're watching KUAM. Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels that transport containers of food, household items, equipment and supplies into the islands every week. Because we know that you depend on us, we work closely with our partners to ensure that our shipments arrive on time, all the time, so you can find your favorite products when you need them. We transport the region's most precious cargo that supports successful businesses and promotes a better quality of life for our families. Matson is proud to have been the hometown shipping carrier for Guam, the CNMI, and Micronesia for the past 25 years. And you can count on us to be here for generations to come. You don't need to worry. 
birthday, keep the smile on your face. The moments you can't replace, and I'll be around. Wherever life takes you, we're always here for you. Calvo's Insurance. Count on us for life. I'm stuck in this, like, infinite time loop thing. I'm reliving the same day over and over again. I get to do whatever I want. Plus, Taco Bell's nacho fries never leave the menu. She's violating the nacho fries limited timeline. Does that happen every day? Let's do it. Try her now! What's KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. And am I with possession? Cody Santos gives it up to Jeffrey, who finds Elijah open. Not sure if he called it, but banks open late at the field house. Darryl Robles drives and passes the ball off to Nicholas, panging the band off the window for two of his seven points. Cody Santos put up a team-high 17 points. Three from the corner is good. UOG's Matthew Santos finished the game with 16 points. Santos with the punt fake at the top of the key. Drives right and gets the shot to go off the backboard. Tritons led 31-29 at halftime. Santos nowhere to go. Kick out pass to Jeffrey, who spots up and buries the deep ball. NMI 11 of 38 from the outside. Kevin Factor with the beautiful assist to Robles, who is cutting to the basket. Robles with the game-high 18 points. Greg Sablon getting in on the deep ball. Assist from Sir Lashu De La Cruz. Factor inbounding the ball finds C.J. Lucan for his only basket of the game. Tritons get the win on their home court, 64-57. to Kevin Factor gets the roll on the layup here. Issa Boys High School Volleyball from Tees and High. The defending ESA Boys Volleyball Champions Titans opening up their 2022 season against the Southern High Dolphins. Xander Duenas with the ace for the home team. Teasing took the first set 25-5. Titans cruising in the second set with the 22-10 lead. Noel Erickson coming down with the kill. Erickson with back-to-back -back shots, followed by an ace from Carlos and Paco for the second set win, 25-12. In the third set, Xander Duenas and VJ Rosario scored back-to-back -back points to put Teasing up 7-3. The defending champs led by as much as eight midway through the set, looking to close out the match. Duenas with the kill, 19-10, Teasing up 22-10. Dominic Pelabello takes over at the serving line with three straight aces to close out the match, 25-10. The Titans step back onto the court on Thursday to play the JFK Islanders at JFK while the Southern High Dolphins face the Ukudu Bulldogs at home down south. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Need a new phone? Trade in now and get up to $500 off our best 5G devices. Trade in your older phone in any condition and step up to better savings and speeds only our 5G network can provide. Check out our website and catch up on the best mobile experience. Trade in now. Docomo Pacific, better together. Mobile smiles just got bigger and better. Get more Smiles points for every gallon of fuel you purchase. Or get more miles with United Mileage Plus. Register your Smiles card online to start redeeming rewards today. At guam.mobilesmiles.com And there you have it. McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich from the makers of the world's most stolen fries. The juicy chicken sandwich from the place that offers extra napkins for a reason. 
with the tender chicken sandwich from the creators of a sandwich phenomenon. So you won't just be biting into a chicken sandwich. You'll be biting into McDonald's new crispy, juicy, tender chicken sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba. For this week's Giving Every Tuesday, a local business that specializes in sportswear recently made a generous donation to Sanctuary Inc. Jonah Gantarfris has more. Giving Every Tuesday is brought to you by Jay Goodman, a happiness company. Since 2015, Run Guam's mission has been to provide quality athletic performance gear true to the spirit and heart of the Pacific. Located in Tumon, the small business has definitely transformed the island's fitness scene. Recently, President of Run Guam Inc., Derek Mandel, had a conversation with Victor Camacho, the executive director of Sanctuary Incorporated. I was mentioning that we had some, you know, unsold products, you know, that was kind of just sitting in the in the back storage. Various uh, designs from, you know, previous years. Um, there were some items that were from the the United Marathon that, you know, was canceled um, in 2020 uh, due to due the due to the pandemic and. Um, just other items that, you know, just, I guess, didn't quite hit the mark. Um. So first off, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and your role here at Run Guam. Okay, uh, my name is Derek Mandel. Um, I'm president of Run Guam Inc. And I handle mainly the, uh, just the business maintenance of it and also the designs of the, of the uh, products. So. So I guess, how did the idea come about to make the donation to Sanctuary Incorporated? Uh, so I met with um, the executive director, uh, Vic Camacho, um, a couple months back um, with another donation for, you know, another organization. And I was mentioning that we had some, you know, unsold products, you know, that was kind of just sitting in the, in the back storage. And, you know, I was wondering, you know, I checked with to see if he was interested in, you know, accepting those donations um, for the residents of Sanctuary. And, uh, yeah, he was more than happy with um, the proposal. So Mandel, along with Sharon Payette and Desmond Mandel III, donated clothing items valued at $5,000 that were new and ready to be used. Camacho said the donation made the kids very happy and that the gear was a perfect addition to their workouts, adding that recreational therapy is essential to providing a healthy and positive experience for those seeking shelter and those enrolled in their various programs. We go into business, you know, to sell products, but when we were able to make a difference, um, you know, it, it gets it's another level of satisfaction, um, you know, not monetary, but just, you know, you feel like you, um, fulfilled another purpose. Camacho adds that if anyone in the community is looking to donate to Sanctuary Incorporated, items such as pots and pans, dish sets, cleaning supplies, towels, bedding, sports equipment, gardening supplies, and non-perishable food are always welcomed. Bigger appliances like washers and dryers, refrigerators, and chest freezers are also needed. With this week's Giving Every Tuesday, for KUAM News, I'm Jonah Gancharfris. Giving Every Tuesday is brought to you by Jay Goodman, a happiness company. And tonight is the night Matthew Sablon, who goes by the name Sabu, will perform an original song on the American Song Contest on KUAM TV 8. He's representing the NMI. He's one of the 56 artists from across the country and the U.S. territories that are competing on the show. Representing Guam is Jason J. American Song Contest airs tonight at 7 o'clock on TV8, and you don't want to miss it. And there's three different ways you can vote to keep him on the show, and we hope that you do. You can vote via the NBC app or vote online at NBC.com slash ASC vote, or you can vote on TikTok by searching American Song Contest. On either of these applications, there's a limit of 10 votes per artist per email or TikTok account. And we wrap up the show with your birthday shout outs. Here's Jason Salas. Birthday candles await to be blown out, presents await to be open, and cake awaits to be eaten, and ice cream. And that's why us at KUM and Cold Stone Creamery are proud to say happy birthday to our April 5th celebrants led off by Malia Lauren Cundiff. Happy birthday number 12. Love Mommy, Drew, Isaiah, Jema, Ariana, Laria, and Landon. 
Dre Thompson, happy birthday number 29 to a friend of ours here at KUM, and your family is sending you all their love. Happy birthday, Dre. And happy birthday and buon compleanno to Roberto Fracassini, a former president of the Rotary Club of Guam, an amazing flautist, as you see here, and Italy's honorary consul general. From the many lives you've touched, the countless people you've inspired and entertained, and all your friends here at KUM, we wish you, sir, a very, a very happy birthday, Mr. Fracassini. And belated birthday wishes going out to Catalina J. Garcia, who was born on April 2nd. Happy belated birthday, Catalina, who turned six on Saturday. We thank God for blessing us with a beautiful, smart, and loving six-year-old who acts like she's 16. Hey, wow. LOL. We love you so very much. Say mommy, daddy. Kaylee, Bugga, Mama, Papa, Nina, Nino, and the entire family. You can be a part of our Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club by checking out KUAM.com. And that's our show. This